Today we're talking about church schools. Welcome to TGI Monday. It's lovely uh, that we've got a bit more light coming in this morning. The boards are coming down, although, <laughs> you know, bit by bit. Um, we're talking today, we've got a question about schools. So I thought it'd just be interesting to ask, schools, best day of your life? Best days of your life? Worst days of your life? I couldn't stand it. Why didn't you like school? Because people told me what to do all the time. Oh, yeah, that is awful, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't like that. I was just—I think really what it was because I was dyslexic and it wasn't diagnosed okay. and all that. Is it? You know, it's a sort of very different '80s kind of experience. Really. Yeah. But I think it was mostly to do with people telling me what to do. See, I quite <laughs> like that about school because then you knew what you know where you are at school, don't you? You know what the rules are, and then you know if you're breaking them or you know if you because don't want to break them. Because you're the kind of person that school succeeds for. But yeah, if you're totally. someone like me mm. who, you know, school takes you through subjects like maths and yeah, yeah. English and French and history, and you go through your day and then you're quality controlled at the end by the teacher. But if you're someone like me who that doesn't work for, you come out... Yeah, yeah. And a failure, and it's, it's not a very pleasant experience at all. So I hated school. Yeah. And a lot of people I, I know didn't like school. And a lot of people I used to deal with when I was a police officer obviously failed at school as well yeah, for all those yeah, same yeah. reasons. So. Yeah, what about you guys? I failed at school. <laughs> I failed mostly to burn it down properly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's no. one of the reasons they Good. got rid of me. Yeah. So I had lots of fun, but they didn't. Is that while you were school chaplain? Or? But, but <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, ultimate detention. Were you, were, you, were you burning schools down as well, Hal? No, no I, this is going to go out publicly, and, I, and yeah, I'm, I'm not going to. I'll leave it to other people to grass me up <laughs> for some of the shenanigans. Girl, so were you a good girl at school? Not primary and middle. I was quite often, I used to dread parents this evening really? because I was in a lot of trouble. It's always just for talking and being distracted and, mm. and that. And then at high school, probably for similar reasons to you, like, you know, later diagnosis of dyslexia. Mm. But, but yeah, I, there was a bit of bullying and I was a bit scared mm. of some people. I mean, I enjoyed the social stuff outside of school, but I wasn't wild about high school. Well, there we go. I, I did quite enjoy school. But this is going to be a great episode because we all don't like the school system. It seems like I may be in the minority there. Well, let's get on to our question and, and see uh, if that helps us a bit. So this is a question that's come in on Facebook from Kizzy Ann, who's one of our regular viewers. And she asks, what is the importance of having church primary schools? Every school has values of caring and nurture. So how is the Church of England school different? So I think it's a really good question. A lot of people, I think, send their children to Church of England schools and there are different kinds of Church of England schools. And it's not always easy to tell, really, what is the difference between a church school and a, a non-church school. Um, do any of you have experiences? Do your children go to church schools or non-church schools? Mine go to state schools, yeah. Well, because... church schools are state schools. Yeah, they go to like whatever Community you're going to call schools. it, not a church school. Yeah. yeah, because it isn't a church school in Drayton, really. Mm. So mm. I thought I'm not driving them miles and miles and miles to go yeah. um, because it just wouldn't be practical. And I, I wanted my kids to uh, be friends with the kids which were around and about sure. in the area, you know. So and be part of that. So yeah, that's why. And do. even at that sort of community school, they get presumably a certain amount of. Um, Christian teaching or religious teaching in different ways or not? Um, I'm the governor of this of, oh, of his old junior school, so I'll have to be very kind. Um, it varies, I think. I think what, what I found is that um, in primary school especially, is teachers have to teach RE. Yeah. And their competence in teaching the subject um, is not very good sometimes because they don't actually understand the subject in, mm. on a meaningful level sometimes and I think they feel that as well so they don't yeah. feel empowered enough to teach yeah. it and I think a lot of the resources that are out there aren't particularly helpful right and um, what I have found is that the big the big myth really is that they have a neutral position and I think that's that's just not true okay. on on all sorts of different levels. Okay. 
Okay. Um, does anyone have an involvement with a school um, that is a church school? Mm -hmm. I had. Okay. I what, were, what were your experiences of, of those? It was interesting because, of course, they're inspected by um, the diocese as yeah. well as by Ofsted. And so the diocese have got all the, you know, the, the um, schools inspections, what they call SIMs. Oh. Yeah. Um, have a have a perspective on on what's distinctly Christian about the school and how that's faith's involved in there. And it's really quite I think it's really quite difficult to to impart that in a um, meaningful way. And and at the same time, uh, as a, you know, a respectful way that you've got a community that's varied varied views yes. on on faith. Yes, exactly. Even at a church school, you're not expecting all the children there by any means no, to be not. regular churchgoers no. or, or to have that sort of link. So what was your experience? Uh, well, I've been a governor, um, foundation governor and parent governor, So, and the children have moved around quite a bit, so we, we've had experience of uh, non church schools and church schools uh, I bought uh, a couple of props because actually the answer to this when I started thinking about it wasn't necessarily what I perhaps would have started with um, and it comes from pastoral experience uh, of quite a lot to do with funerals and taking care of people mm. and the reason I've got this rather weird looking plant is because I asked Doug about have you got anything with lots of roots on and this is apparently a strawberry plant um, <laughs> but there are lots of roots there here are. because actually so often what I think the role is and what's going to be dangerously missing is learning some of the faith in ways which later on will come back to you. So learning things like the Lord's Prayer. If you don't learn it as a child, you're probably not going to learn it. Um, the, the songs that we sing also take on a meaning when people are older. Um, and the various prayers and approaches to church, so things like harvest. So actually, the kind of building blocks, if children aren't then going to go to church, let's say, I mean, for the rest of their lives, mm. when, when, when we encounter them in parish, those things, and that, suddenly you've got a shared language for which to talk. And actually, so I, I think the roots thing is really about helping children have some roots that, that will hold them at difficult yeah. times and that that is as much about learning some of those prayers some of those things which which would, might remain in the passive memory for most mm -hmm. of their life ideally not but having them there is significantly better than not having them and people do draw on those things when they're going through the difficult times uh, uh, in lots of different ways mm -hmm. but i really think that's where our value um is and it is such an amazing opportunity to be able to mm -hmm. do that with people but it's kind of a building block for 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 the rest of life, really. Yeah, yeah. So, Paul, I know you've been uh, working in a school uh, until recently as a chaplain. That's quite unusual, isn't it, in a state school to have a ch have a chaplain mm. um, role? That was a church school, presumably. Yeah. And a church secondary school, which is actually mm. quite rare indeed. Yeah. Did you feel that that um, gave a different feel to the school? Did it add something different? Well, I, I remember being interviewed by. Uh, somebody on BBC Radio, and they were asking, uh, why have we got church schools? As if the church has abducted ownership right. of these schools, where actually the history is the other way around. To begin with, education in this country was strictly private. So unless you were wealthy, you didn't have an education. So children <clears> were used as slave labour in cotton mills, as chimney sweeps, down coal mines. And the people in the church thought, this isn't a good idea. Let's get together some money and build some schools. And that's how it all began. And they were the only publicly accessible schools before the state, decades later, took yeah. responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is really important. There is a quite a complicated history, isn't there, about voluntary aided and voluntary controlled and how all of these things kind of came together. But I, I think that's right, just to remember that actually the church has a, a hugely positive history in terms of providing education freely to everybody. And, you know, that is still the case in church schools, that, that yeah. it is available to everyone. And, you know, Kizzy Ann makes this point that every school has values of caring and nurture, and that's certainly true. Um, every school has a responsibility to provide a thing called I always want to call it SCS, but that is the sofa workshop. Um, they change it. SMC, yeah. social, no, what is it? Spiritual, moral, and cultural something. It, yeah. And so every school has a, a responsibility to provide some kind of spiritual um, 
uh, provision for for their kids. Dan, I don't know what you think about the difference between whether a, 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 a sort of a church school or a non-church school does that more effectively. Or... Oh, I think they all do it quite effectively. I, I'm, I'm glad if all schools are teaching values yeah. and good, you know, and good morals to, to children, and that that should be the case. But Christianity isn't about you know good people getting better; it's about bad people dealing with their inability to be good, mm. and therefore we need Jesus. Absolutely. Uh, what... And so, church for me, sticking a sticking, placing my children in a church Christian school was not about them getting good values because I knew they could mm. get good values from the local state school around the corner. But I wanted them somewhere where they would be immersed with, with, with Jesus and so consequently I put my kids actually in a Roman Catholic school hmm. and I do drive my kids quite a long way to take them there because I actually at the time I felt that that was the best place for them to be to have to be brought up as Christians outside the home because they're outside of my, of my home for many many hours hmm. in the day and in the week and I want I want Christianity to kind of permeate, permeate their lives as, as day to day so for me that was a big reason for me yeah. doing that and to lose that opportunity for for I know there's campaigns out there to stop this kind of activity but for to take the control away for me as a parent to be able to do that I just mm. think would be awful. I think what that's about or is to do with when we talked about the history of church schools and how, to, how Christianity has been intimately involved in education right is what I have noticed uh, in the media and in society over the last even when I was in school is a narrative which is fundamentally false, which is that Christianity is against education, right. against <laughs> learning, against yeah. these other things. Yeah. And I think that one place where, at least in school, people can learn things which are actually accurate, and I can look back on my uh, time in school in the state education system, in Aberdeer Boys Comprehensive School, <laughs> and I was taught lots of things about Christianity which were fundamentally false. Mm. And I used to argue with the teacher and tell her that it was fundamentally false. And I find that quite yeah. worrying. Yeah, it is. I guess on a more positive note, um, I, I just want to mention a couple of really good things that are going on at the moment. Um, the Church of England has produced this huge new resource called Understanding Christianity, um, which is exactly designed to overcome some of the problems you've been mentioning, how teachers who don't feel equipped to teach that subject well and so look here's a resource that mm. actually enables you to do that really well the other thing i wanted to mention a few years ago i went to a presentation um by a school up in kidsgrove called the king's school which is a really unusual thing it's a secondary school that had just become a church school having been a sort of failing comprehensive and one of the things they talked about, which I just thought was extraordinary, when they were developing their sort of behaviour policy and, and so on, they said, we want it to be based on the principles of forgiveness and grace. And that's extraordinary, isn't it? But actually, that's the kind of thing which, if you're working in a church school environment rather than a, a non-church school environment, you can say, actually, you know, we do, we do recognise there need to be behavioural uh, standards and there need to be systems of dealing with that and there may need to be but it's punishment, not all law it's also gospel but it's not just law it's also grace and i just thought that's a, that wouldn't that be a wonderful thing mm -hmm. for children to be learning so there we go tell us your experiences uh, of being in school church schools or non-church schools uh, and how that's helped or not in your faith thanks for watching join the conversation in all the usual places and share and like with all your friends. Do you grind this up like an infinite wallet? Yeah, I haven't really got the kit to make it into resin. It? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, strawberry plant. Strawberry plant? Yeah. Oh, I was told the police anyway when they took the ball out. Yeah. Yeah.